Hey everybody, this is Grace. And uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about something that's quite disturbing to me. And it's basically some... Recently, basically, well actually yesterday, I started watching a one of those n new uh, reality TV kind of things. Now, I'm not much of a fan of it, of reality TV, but I, I guess... Um, the first time I ever watched one was probably, well, let's see, uh, maybe 22 years ago, <laughs> somewhere around there. And I've, I remember finding it quite disturbing. It could have been a lot before then, even. And thinking, you know, the different types. I mean, I guess it wasn't anything like it is today back then. Um, some before then were just. I guess a little here and there, but not like focused on being reality, you know, TV. Anyway, um, because I would find them disturbing, <laughs> really. As a social and behavioral scientist, uh, taught at college and university, um, briefly. And uh, I was a career student in these fields. I studied so many different things, uh, both undergraduate and graduate. And... Um, I would find them like, ooh, what is that doing to the people who are in it and doing to the people who are watching it? Especially um, uh, the ones who are more sheltered and maybe they hadn't seen anything like that. And, and it seemed like for some it would be, that's what they're teaching them how to behave and the behaviors were bad. Uh, oft, quite often, more along the line of... Um, but some would say narcissistic histrionic. Now, I've seen narcissistic histrionic behaviors. I'm not diagnosing anybody, but their behaviors, like a blend of them, in my whole lifetime. Okay, I'm 59, and I have seen so much of that. But a lot of it is about. It depends on what kind of reality it is. Mine, the one I usually watch, is more about relationships, and uh, like marriage or dating, and along this line. Um, because I studied to become a counselor for people who were uh, relationship have relationship issues, mainly women who were leaving uh, the transition between leaving a relationship, taking time to themselves to work it all out and everything, and then to move on. And, uh, and I started many years ago <laughs> studying for that. But some of them weren't about relationship, but relationships would happen within those reality TV shows. Now I've seen, I'm not a fan of watching them, but every once in a while I would pick up one and uh, you know, a new one would flash across my screen kind of thing, like happened yesterday. And uh, I don't, I'm not going to name which ones and all that, but I started watching it and I was like, oh man, this is sending out really bad, bad, like standards. Okay, when you, of course, when somebody's dating, you know, they have to know what they want, okay? Then it doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to get that. And uh, that in itself is a bit self-centered, but the person is dating. Okay, they're starting something and they don't, you know, of course they have some thoughts about, you know, what kind of person they want. But th these were teaching to me. Um, they were teaching things like to look at first at suit things that are superficial, appearance number one it seemed like number one is to make sure they're good looking no <laughs> that's so superficial and the other one was about of course money now those could go either way you know to see how much earning potential they have you know and that's where it in my view it gets really screwed up that's a disaster waiting to happen when the person spoke, focusing mainly on super things that are superficial, and it can go beyond that, of course. Just those two, but those two seem to be the top two. You know, how how can they support me? And are they going to be good arm candy kind of thing? I don't like those terms like arm candy and such. Whether it's male or female, huh? Yeah. Instead of focusing on, are they a good decent person? Well, can I treat this person right and this person would treat me right? You know, do I have really good, you know, of course, you have to meet them and get to know them. 
but do I have a good, re you know, what they're saying and what I'm saying, does it mesh right? You know, something like this. On, you know, you're going, you know, in those kind of relationships, people may be spending at least a good chunk of their lives together. You know, if it's, if it's worth it. But what, they're going to get in a relationship with, based on how their person looks and if they make money and how long is it going to last? my experience from what I've seen not that long what I've seen in other people not that long okay or they, if they do it's going to be especially if the, you know to me people who are superficial like that um, they're, they're often in my experience this doesn't mean it's 100% across the board it's not one size fits all my opinions could be wrong and it's not going to fit every situation in the first place. I don't give any advice. Read the disclaimers in the description box below this video on YouTube. But my experience in that is with the person who is, let's just say, good looking. I've never known them to be handsome or you know, beautiful, but good looking. Either one. You know, when they're dating and... The, that person is usually one who's rather histrionic. If that's their good, their ways of looking at it, histrionic with a narcissistic blend, the behaviors of them. I'm not saying disorders. I don't diagnose. But, uh, yeah, they have those blends of behaviors, and it pretty much sticks out. It's all about them, all about what their wants, their needs, their desires, and they have to be good-looking. They're so superficial. They have to have everything a certain way. And they're going to treat that person in a very, uh, uh, well, th th it's not going to be a good match, <laughs> put it that way. especially if they go for somebody. Now, if they are a histrionic person and they go from some, for somebody who's not that good looking, oh my goodness, that's a disaster. In other words, it's a disaster being in a relationship, and from what I've seen, people who go through who or have that kind of blend of behaviors because that person is going to be focused on themselves nobody else it's all about them and um, and they're gonna ha already have this inflated uh, sense of self uh, such as you know like I said one size doesn't fit all in all these but not all of them do the same thing yeah okay where was I but anyway they're going to have that such a sense of themselves and they're going to be condescending and, or, um, you know, they want somebody to do everything for them because it's all about them to them. So they want that little mini-me type that is, you know, what they can't do, the other person should do, get done. And some of it is that they won't work and they expect the other person to work to pay for their, their, the way, living the way they feel is right. Or they want to be the one working and the other person does everything else. Or that person has career goals or has a career a goal or whatever and no what comes first to them is them so if they want that person not to work and to take care of the family to take care of the children well the family then children the home the everything you know they'll push for it because it's, to them it's all about them not the other person not the family themselves okay and so in my view any relationship with this that I have ever seen anybody go through, it has been a disaster. Okay, for that per for the the innocent victim. Yeah. Now some people, they they see it as though they have to. They're good looking, so therefore they have to find somebody that's good looking. How superficial? How long do you think that's going to last? Some of them could, because their goals are such that they they want the same thing. Um, as far as they want that person who's good looking, you know, the, that term I don't like, arm candy. And they both have it. Okay, with one another. They have a goal for money, so they both have it. Now, that may be the case, you know, that it works for them for a while, at least. And then, but then they have children, or maybe they don't, but <laughs> because they're too, you know, no, they're not going to have children. But if they do, what do you think that happens to the children? Do you think that they really want to spend that much time with their children when the, instead their lives are all about themselves? You know? 
But anyway, just watching these shows, and that's not the only one I've ever seen. And it's pretty obvious because the way, for one thing, some of these shows, they, what they do is the people who are the um, on the show, the ones who are ever, whatever the show's um, focus is, they're going to be good looking. Very seldom have I ever seen, well, the first one I ever saw, the first one that I recall ever seeing, like 22 years ago, um, it was a mix. But after that, that same show got to where it wasn't. It was always, I mean, always, everybody there was good looking and young. Now, 20 years ago, I was younger. <laughs> you know, it was 22 years ago. And I still felt it. I still went, whoa. You know, at least I, from what I recall. I mean, as time went on and saw that same show and saw different ones, start, started seeing more and more. And these are people who are go going to be good looking. And more recently, um, more recent years, you know, this is 22 years, is that they will, um, over 22 years, how it's more and became more and more, is that they want them to look rather histrionic. Seriously, and histrionic appearances often... My experience, what I've, what I've seen, and I've seen it since I was born, um, is that when they're younger, they're more provocative. The way they dress, uh, the women, and men can too be, you know, more provocative. But often it's something um, about their hair and their beard, if they have one uh, beard, mustache, something that makes sure that they stand out and uh, makes them basically look sexy or look different to where people will notice them. Okay, and make sure they, they want to make sure people notice them. And uh, no matter to what extent, well, how they dress, you know, same thing for women. Especially the very, very low cut um, shirts. Often it's a dress very tight and very short and very you know, short as far as they barely go beyond their hips and barely and sometimes when they move a certain way not and pretty much nothing underneath and the the very low cut um top of it the dress the shirt the whatever really <laughs> so to me that's a red flag because their behaviors become so bad I mean, don't become, they are. I have known some from very, very young age when I was a kid. Okay, and they were a kid. I don't talk about children, but I, as far as I know, no, none can be diagnosed be, you know, before they're adults. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just put it that way. But I've known some that they never change, they only worsen, and to them, maybe they only improve their skills and their manipulative uh, like I said, they have a narcissistic blend that I have seen. You might not have ever seen any of them. Um, like I said, again, one size doesn't fit all. They don't do all the same. They don't all do the same thing. But wow, this comes awful close. And I've I've moved around. I was born and raised in Texas. I'm living in Texas again. But I have moved around a lot in my life, different uh, states. Um, yeah various states, various towns, city, uh, mainly cities and suburbs, exurbs, but then towns, it kind of goes like that, <laughs> but uh, yeah, suburbs, exurbs, all, I've lived in so many different places, really, so many, I loved to travel when I was younger, and did, okay, so anyway, I've seen so many different types, yeah, even, you know, so many different types that were born in the USA. So many different types who were born in other countries. Other countries, plural. Okay, especially, um, well, I can't even say especially, but when I was a student, a lot of people from different countries. So, yeah. Okay. And I'm not saying that all of them that I met were this way, but I would see some, or at least one. I used to just put it that way. There's always going to be at least that one. I don't think in terms of always, but unless it has been always for me. You see what I'm saying? But I usually don't know. I mean, it's always what it's been for me, but that's not always what it will be. There you go. But, 
anyway but the relationships they, they don't turn they don't uh it just they're bad relationships and eventually i think more and more these days maybe hopefully you know, there's so much more awareness out there by people like me, my age group, any age group. They point out the behaviors. Uh, I started when I was very young, uh, not very young, but when the World Wide Web was very young, um, back in the 90s and even a little before then, 1990 and a little before then. Uh, yeah, getting out the word, seriously. And nowadays it's like, you can find it's out there it's out there but th back then no not so much it was so it was it was hard to learn things like about these people with these uh, behaviors of personalities disorders or some do actually have the personality disorders you know that's not for us to diagnose but uh, if they had been diagnosed by the appropriate type of person wherever you live uh, uh, appropriate professional yeah who can diagnose legally. Okay, some people just say they can and they can't. But anyway, um, and some haven't been, but their behaviors stick out. And that's a pun, so, somewhat of a pun, when you say that about histrionics, because they're going to make sure they stick out. Not all of them, but pretty much. <laughs> I have seen, yeah. They do something, they wear something, they, they talk really loud, laugh really loud, I call it a cackle. And, uh, they're going to stand out. They're going to, like if somebody has had some something good, really good, like a, say had a baby or getting married or something really bad, like getting a divorce or a death in the family, something like that, they'll, they'll let that person have a little bit of attention for a little while because, you know, they don't want to look too bad. But then when they give, they, and that's how they see it, they give them a little while to have a little bit of attention. But then they turn it back around on them. And themselves they will turn you know you've had enough in their view you've had enough attention it's my back to me now you know this kind of mentality narcissistic histrionic blended behaviors but some of these to get back to this some of these shows they really do seem like they're teaching or or that some people who are more sheltered can who don't realize that's not a good those aren't good behaviors to feel so entitled like they they feel entitled that they deserve there's a word that's often used they deserve a person who's good looking they deserve a person who's earning a lot of money they deserve a person who's going to take care of them that's this back to that focus on them you know they deserve they deserve they, it's like it's like the way the people have that little mantra mentality that said things like you know people have to earn ugh, that word ugh, earn their respect uh, who are you? <laughs> you know? Oh, that's that's the wrong way to teach people. It should be, in my opinion, it should be to teach people to respect others, respect themselves, and but also respect others. Unless they do something bad towards you to do, to uh, take away from that respect you have from for them, they're still humans. People make mistakes. Everybody, nobody's perfect. Everybody. These are the ones I will say. Nobody and every. Body, you know, in that kind of sense. Everybody makes mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Okay, so if somebody does something that one time that takes away from your respect, are you going to say that, that the whole person is bad? It depends on what it is. It really depends on, there's not a one size fits all in this either. It really depends on what they did. Okay, but to think that somebody's going to earn it from you, <laughs> it sounds so, yeah, once again. Uh, you know, under the whole thing of entitled, entitlement. And, uh, but it's not just that. It's not just that. It's, like I said, it goes on and on. Beyond just entitlement. But the whole, and there's also the thing that they, one of the things they t teach seemed to, I don't, it purposefully, I don't know. Maybe it sells. Who knows? You know, there's not something new on that. What sells? Sex sells. That was the uh, mantra back when I was young. But anyway, it's that whole thing of it's okay to cheat. No. No, no, it's never been okay to cheat. Why is that all of a, uh, all of a sudden okay? It's all, you know, because the, what comes along with it is that whole thing of uh, or to find that one for you. 
And it could be cheating or causing someone not not in, it doesn't have to be it could be emotionally cheating okay emotional cheating let me put it there that's what i want to talk about is the emotional one and they they're teaching to go for whatever you want to go do whatever you have to do to get what you want in life and some will take it upon themselves to say well that means if i hey if i see my uh this other woman has a man that i want i'm gonna go for it i'm gonna get it right in the middle of it or break them up because I want him you see or it can be the other way around man versus man or whatever is the situation okay and some of them seem to be putting out there that this is okay behavior that it's, it's acceptable I don't know what kind of what kind of, really what are you teaching when it comes down to it to those who are the, you know, more sheltered, they're just learning, or even somebody who's older and has been, you know, married for a lot of years, maybe they married their childhood sweetheart, you know, and then there, something happens, you know, one of them passes away, and the other one goes back out into the dating world, and they say, you know, look what's going, you know, what do, how do I learn about how it is today? And then they see this, you know, and they didn't experience it. Some, you know, some maybe not so, you know, lacking so much awareness, you know, to be, so, that they're so, they have been so sheltered. So, you know, some of them have been out in life all around. Um, no, these are bad behaviors. Now, you don't do this. You don't take, try to take somebody else's. Uh, person, you know, the person, the special person in their lives, because you want it. You want that person. That's what it's doing. It's seeing it like a, that person is an object. You know, it. Because you want it. No. But these, these are these are bad lessons. These are very bad, bad lessons. That these, some of these shows. Not it's not all in any of this. Um, you know, unless I stated it was all. <laughs> But you see what I'm saying? Oh my goodness. The, the, it just, it doesn't really shock me because I'm not naive. I have been around this world for a long time. I did actually did the, also, the, um, in my life I did the internet dating. Oh my goodness, the stories I could tell. Really. Oh my goodness. Like there's a script out there. I only date men, I only dated men. I don't date anymore. But when I dated, it was only men, and I'm not saying that it's men, all men are bad or anything like that, because I didn't date women, I wouldn't know. Um, but the, too many of the men, not all, but too many of them, it was like they had been handed a script. And this is how they say things over and over. And even the women, they would say things about that were negative. I mean, like they met somebody from an online dating, and they this, and it was the same script. The same stories, you know, far too often. I don't know if I ever met any man on there that didn't have the same story. <laughs> so, I dated, when you can say you dated like me, too much. I mean, I dated a lot and that's too much because I saw so much of it. It's like, oh my goodness, this is what's out there on these predators. These are predators. Okay. Seriously, what I saw, these were predators. You know, I'm not saying 100%, but pretty close to it. And back then, you know, it was rather new. Now, people dating more these days, whatever age, uh, whatever age, what I, what I still hear from them and what I hear, heard from other people back then dating, that's what they saw, it were predators. You know, whether it was male or female, predators. It was a man telling me stories, you know. Sometimes I, if, when I heard what they had to say about the women or in their lives, the women in their lives, and they just kept going on, and it was like, uh huh, this is what you're doing. And usually I found out that's true. Like, this was what they were doing projection. Oh, I could tell so many stories. I mean, actually, just the whole story. Oh, my goodness. Each one. Unbelievable what I saw and what I heard other women go through um, who dated men, only men, and so on and so forth, you know. 
But anyway, I think I've said enough for this one. Yeah. Plus, I've been sitting out here in my SUV. So for a while now, I'll do this. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up. Talk to you on another video. Bye.